Welcome to episode 25 of Crave the Book. Today, we're going to be covering chapters 28 through 37 of Tracy Wolf's Crush. And this episode runs a little bit longer. There are some court spoilers towards the end, but we will make sure to let you guys know when those pop up so that you do not get the story spoiled for you if you haven't finished. So guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, we're back to our usual schedule covering uh, Crush today. Just a quick disclaimer, I am deathly sick. It is way later (laughs) than we normally record our episodes, but I am very congested. So we're going to be relying a lot on Amber to lead the discussion today. We're going to be covering chapters 28 through 37 of Crush crush. So, um, Amber, let's go ahead and get disclaimers for spoilers out of the way for those who have not completed the series. And and even a little bit of court, we, we're going to try to not throw in a lot of court spoilers. And I, I think anything that we talk about with court won't be significant enough to ruin the book no it won't it won't be end game spoilers it will be the things you find out very early on in the book yeah so uh guys make sure that if you haven't read the series and you're only reading through crush you listen for a very special sound amber do you want to tell them what that sound is of course the sound that you want to be listening out for is of course the wolf howl that we play every single week it is the uh, noise you need to listen out for sounds like this no <laughs> and that will be your warning for whatever follows will be a spoiler if you have not finished crush or cover it, um or have at least started court um we have maybe one or two court spoilery topics to talk about so i will try and mention that they are court, court spoilers and i'll probably put them at the end so that you can get to listen to at least most of the podcast if you haven't finished yeah nothing nothing insane nothing that's going to in fact, most no. it's it's like theories. A lot of it is related to theories that we already had and announced way before court came out that were just confirmed. And then just pre, yeah, they were proven to be true, and we were like, "Oh, okay, then." Yeah, we got it right. <laughs> All right, Amber, lead the way. I'm just, I'm like sitting here. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm drunk, so this is going to be fun. It's going to be like, it's going to be like me just sitting here trying to stay awake. Let's let's do this. I'm gonna need to keep poking and prodding you verbally. It's, it's like I've got to make that. Sure you're alive. I've got that nice husky, like sexy radio voice. <laughs> so we start off the scene that we've read today, where Grace has just found out that Hudson's living inside her head, and the first thing that Jackson suggests is to go and visit the blood letter oh that sounds a lot uh, scarier than it ended up being didn't it <laughs> yeah well um, she's she's supposedly this ancient vampire that's lived for tens of thousands of years she's lived for longer than most things on earth um she's terrifying somebody referred to her as brutal lethal um and that she lives in the middle of nowhere in her own little ice cave like a bear so Grace was very apprehensive about going to visit <laughs> and um we we find out that Jackson's pretty much ready to leave straight away like he doesn't even really give Grace any sort of notice that that's what they're doing she's like right you ready to meet me in 15 minutes <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah so they're they're rushing on and she goes and she gets all of her coats and her bags and stuff so she packs and um she looks outside to the snowmobile and she's ready to climb on and Jackson's like, no, that'll only slow us down. Uh, what? Uh, uh, what? And it turns out vampires can fade. So we work out that fading is traveling at 200 miles an hour. Which and a lo- it's like... F- it's a lot sexier than um 
those images of Edward running through the forest with <laughs> yes, Bella. Yes, <it's> just running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I imagined it in almost like um, elastic banding across, <laughs> Boing. so that there would be there would be a specific limit to which a vampire could extend it. Some would be better than others. Some would be more practiced. Some would be faster because of the elasticity. You know, like you use a thicker rubber band might be a bit more of tension. Thinner runner band can go flyer and further. Yeah. Um, so that's how I was kind of imagining it to be because he stops and starts a lot. Um, and yeah, he travels like hours in what Grace explains to be feeling like a few minutes. So already we're getting that sort of like bending reality, bending time kind of thing well, where I she's mean, a bit confused where where they're even going and then also how far they've been traveling. She has absolutely no concept of where she is. And she's like, I'm safe. I'm with Jackson. And then he mentions bears. <laughs> so, yeah, you're kind of reminded that they are in the middle of the Arctic Circle. Yeah, but like uh, they could just they could just like fade away from a bear. Like I I really don't think that a bear is I, I would not is be a, a match. It's not a match with Jackson. Yeah, I would I wouldn't be freaked out if I mean he could I've, just blimp the bear. I've lived in places where there have been bears. Yeah, he could have just floated the bear away. There's so many <laughs> things you could do in that case to get rid of a bear. Grace has yeah. a bag full of granola bars. She could just throw the bear a granola bar and they could fade <laughs> away. It's not yeah, but as a Brit, bears are pretty terrifying. We've I've never met one. <sighs> we don't live anywhere where there would be one. Uh, they we we can't even comprehend their size because we've never been anywhere near one in relation to anything else. So seeing a bear in a zoo enclosure doesn't really compute because you're seeing it next to things that are already scaled to be its size. But if you've seen a bear walk past a picnic table or a wheelie bin, you know that's really big. And well, we don't have that. Bears, are, <laughs> bears are all are very, very different in size. And you know what's funny is when I first read Crush, I was laying in a hammock in the middle of the woods in Pennsylvania, if you do recall, because I was Marco Poloing you. And it, it's eerie le sitting out in a hammock in the woods in an area that does have a lot of bears because yes, you can hear them. I mean, bears are, they, they're lumbering creatures. Um, mm. But also when you're that far into the forest, there are a lot of sounds. There are constantly twigs falling from the tops of trees because that's just what happens when the wind blows. There are constantly squirrels dropping walnut shells and making you think <laughs> that you're hearing things. So you have to decide, especially at night, which a lot of the book I did read in the dark next to the fire in the pitch black in the mountains in Pennsylvania. And there were sounds all around yeah. us. And we just had to like trust that the fire would be enough to keep all of these <laughs> creatures at bay, which it did. We didn't have any bears, but we did see some bears. And yeah, it, it it's like, it, it's almost like when you see one, your brain says dog. Cause they kind of look and act like, I don't know, like a, like a big dog, but it's like a Newfoundland. If I mean the thing about bears is mo in most cases if you yell at them they're gonna run. <laughs> okay, so. good to know. If anybody Scre walks through my door, I will know to just yell at a bear. Scream at the bear. <laughs> well, speaking speaking of fear and anxiety, there was a there was a moment where Grace was explaining how it felt to be fading, and she said that. Everything else in her life, even the bad stuff, just disappeared, leaving only the most basic survival instincts in its place. And I was like, <gasps> I think I want to fade. Like, how cool would that be? Not just to be able to, like, travel from place to place super fast and super easy, but also how many times have you just wanted the world to stop or to just disappear for a bit, to be really quiet? Oh, yeah, all the you, time. You could just have You could just have calm headspace and go for laps around your house. I'd clean the house. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder whether you can do things whilst you're fading. Like, are they able to do that? Or is it just like instant, like I'm running and that's the only thing I can do? 
Have you ever seen that TikTok video, that guy who cleans the house super duper fast? He's just like throwing, <laughs> slinging stuff around. <laughs> I have seen the TikTok where it's like a br- like trio of brothers that are playing Xbox or whatever. And then they hear that their mum's pulling up on the drive and then they instantly start like tidying the house before <laughs> she comes through the door. Like, and it's really well choreographed, almost like a dance scene of them yeah. trying to get it done. And that, that that's funny. But imagining that also vamp speed it's quite funny hashtag yeah, relatable. Like, yeah so i was like oh, i just wondered like just how much of like grace's anxiety could just be kind of dealt with if jackson took for her took her for a run every now and then yeah i mean when i'm having when i'm having an anxiety attack um it's it's definitely different than how like grace describes her her panic attacks um but I, I often say that I wish that I could just put my brain on standby mode. Like I don't mm-hmm. – it, it's like one of those things where you talk to somebody and they're like, oh, my God, that sounds suicidal. I'm like, no, I don't want to end my life. <laughs> I just don't – I don't want to be here right now. And if you're not tired enough to go to sleep and you don't want to be here right now, there's really no other thing to do. You can't – I mean, unless you're really good at meditation, which – you know, that takes a lot of practice. And if you're already anxious, it's hard to get into a meditative state anyway. So it's like... The- yeah, it just kind of kind of stops thinking for a bit. Yeah. Because your, your, your body instantly has to just be focusing on maintaining oxygen, maintaining blood flow, the things that keep your body alive. Because there's not enough time whilst you are fading to think about the things that are worrying you and the bad things or the good things. You literally can be asleep essentially you're you are in you are asleep because you're not in REM sleep you're not dreaming yet yeah it's an interesting concept and I thought like why did nobody think to unless it is just the way that Grace experiences it and that's not how vampires experience it so therefore nobody thought that that would be a good idea it's not it's not like a it's not like a needed evolutionary adaptation for the vampires of this world though to be able to distance themselves from from thought because like in twilight the vampires can't sleep but in in the crave universe they do just sleep like normal people Um, for months (laughs) yeah so but in twilight i mean the reason everybody says like why the heck did the did these teenagers go to school like when if i was a vampire i simply wouldn't go to school um, but then in Midnight Sun, we got that little bit of information where Edward says that it's like that is their sleep because they've done it so many times that it's literally they can just zone out. It is the same as sleeping mm-hmm. because they've done it so many times. And then it allows them, it allows him to also listen and make sure that nobody's suspicious of their their family. But in the Crave universe, I don't see really a a need for that. So maybe it is just Grace who finds that peace. There also doesn't seem to be a downside to being a vampire yet. Like, even though we did think for a while during Crave that Jackson was going, like, bloodlusty and uh, hangry, but that turns out that it was just Leah's tea. Um, And he was horny. And he was horny. There doesn't seem to be any, like, get away from me. I'm going to kill you because I'm hungry. No, their self-control is a lot better. They've, um... Yeah. they're, they're, They're a lot better with consent. (laughs) <laughs> yes it just seems to be kind of like a a race thing like it's like you you don't have any issues with it because you've lived with it for an entire time that you've been alive because that is your faction but yeah I'm sh- and i'm sure that it's- i'm sure that like at a very young age in order to keep any you know paranormal species from being discovered by the general populace they're probably taught a, a certain line of you know self-control and things that they these humans are not your sandwiches yeah yeah (laughs) so anyway they have this fading thing going on for thousands of miles and they come across this mountain and he says and jackson says that this is where the butler lives and grace then starts to have those thoughts realizing that jackson's going to live forever that he's going to be there 
when this mountain for as long as this mountain is is here for as well and um at no point does she ever think are gargoyles immortal or what are we gonna do when i die and he doesn't die like she doesn't have any of this she just kind of ruminates about the fact that jackson's gonna just live as long as his mountain she doesn't seem to be sad that at some point she's gonna be growing old and crinkly she Um, could just gargoyle herself like every few months it's she doesn't know how yet it's like a cryogenic thing yeah (laughs) but i was just kind of glad that it wasn't uh woe is pity me like bella was in twilight where she starts like i'm gonna be a girl yeah she's 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 not self-conscious of the fact that she is going to grow old because she can kind of believe that jackson is going to love her no matter what and it, it was quite sweet that like it was literally two three lines of her kind of discussing it in her head and at no point was it like what is jackson gonna do if i die or I like I wonder whether gargoyles are immortal. It was all just in awe of what Jackson could be and how, just how much he would outlast. And uh, yeah, it was quite sweet. Yeah, it's it's sweet until it hits the age where she's like forty five and he's <laughs> eighteen. Yeah, and then and then in my head, you know, it it sounds sweet to the ear. The whole "I'll love you forever" thing from your teenage vampire sweetheart. But at the same time, after a while, it's like, hmm, stops being sweet. These, these vampires age, though, don't they? Because he's yeah. got a mother and a father who have... Yeah, they just age slowly. Probably, probably, yeah, they probably don't look 18 still. So I'm wondering what the age cycle is for them. Like, how long do they look the way that they do? Is it is it genuinely that slow? Or are his parents 25 in vampire years like did they have them did he, they have him early are there any old old vampires and we know this because we meet the blood letter so clearly they do grow old but she's like elderly nan and she's tens of thousands of years old we need um we need like dog years for vampires yeah that would be good tracy get on that we need like a little timeline that would be really good because then we can see what's appropriate age-wise and what's yeah. not. <laughs> when, when, when does it start being taboo and creepy? Yeah. So before they meet the, the blood letter, Jackson starts going through all these rules that he's kind of suddenly come up with on the fly as to how Grace needs to behave herself around this blood letter because this this woman is terrifying. And he's like, don't speak, don't touch her don't just don't just just don't do anything and i was wondering whether as a parent have you ever given like taylor these rules because you just realized that there is nothing that a kid is going to understand about this encounter with a thing or or an action so you just get just 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 don't just stand there just (laughs) oh yeah hands in your pockets every day don't touch anything (laughs) every day anytime we walk into any store where everything is glass (laughs) because <laughs> children have uh, like if we go into for example we had this big liquor store in california where it was just like aisles and aisles and aisles of glass bottles and i'm like okay i want you to keep your hands in your pockets don't spin around <laughs> don't dance you're not a ballerina right now you're going to walk and you're <laughs> going to stand in the middle of the aisle because she would just <laughs> <laughs> yeah and she'll play the can i have game <laughs> yeah can i have not at the liquor store no <laughs> you never know she might there might be a really pretty bottle like what if there was an eevee shaped one yeah you you experienced the the wrath of the can <laughs> the can i have can i yeah. have can i have can i have while you were here yeah. it's like i really need this and we're looking at it and it's like squishy beads <laughs> what, would you, what would you possibly need this for <laughs> i need it yeah it's like, I need it. I have a project that I've been waiting to do for months. And I'm like, yeah, which project? She goes, uh, squishy bead one. Ah, <laughs> uh, as is the life of yeah. the 10 year old. Um, the, do- the Dollar Tree one was the worst. And I think it was because she realized that like every single thing that she asked for, she had just as much of a chance to get it because they were all the same price <laughs> yeah the, the the odds were quite even at the dollar yeah. tree and she knows she's, she's like, like yeah. it's only a dollar yeah yeah so it's like if i ask um, for this and she so says, no, i love I'll how just go i, for something I only have like 
one note here. <laughs> is the blood letter black? I don't know. Because I didn't have that impression. During You're like breaking up real bad on my end. You sound like a robot. Ooh. Okay. One Are second. you there? Let me check Discord. I am here. Oh, okay. You sound normal now. For a minute, you sounded like a robot. Yeah. So during this reread, I'm like, so I, I think that my problem is when I read the blood letter, right when I got to like white or, or I think it was white curly hair, like my brain Im- immediately started imagining my like great grandma. Um, and and then my brain just stuck to that. Like that was the picture that was in my head of my own great grandma. And then during this reread, I was trying to pay a little bit more attention. And then she said light brown skin. And I'm like, what is the ethnicity of of the of the blood letter? Cause I've I've been picturing her all wrong. I just I got one little piece of a description and I was like, that white hair. Obviously. Well, she's not she- she's not gonna get a tan in the in the cave well yeah that's that and that would mean that she's likely of a light brown skinned ethnicity i'm just wondering have i been completely viewing this this woman all wrong the entire time i've been reading the series because i just pictured to look like my grandma because because based based on the scene that follows and if anybody hasn't read any I'm, i'm sure this is not a spoiler um but she seems to be able to manipulate her surroundings. She gets Grace to, she sees her beach from San Diego and she's then suddenly in a desert. She's able to manipulate the surroundings. And within court, we find out that everything that's in the cave, her chairs and stuff, she just manipulates. She changes the scenery. She changes her belongings all the time. I think she's, she's tanning in her, in her, maybe, um, maybe she's, go- she's added a sunbed. <laughs> she's going to the beach. Oh, I wouldn't be doing a sunbed. I'd be turning turning my uh, lair into a beach and laying out on a. On maybe a I was. I just thought it would be really funny to imagine her with those like like black goggles. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's why she looks so much older. She's been tanning maybe, way too long. Maybe she's, yeah, it's all, that, it's all that tanning. Those UV rays. <laughs> but yeah, I I didn't catch that description. So you picture going to be looking. D- did you picture like a, an old lady that you know in your life? Yeah, I pictured my nan. <laughs> like, <laughs> she's just an a, old lady. The blood letter is everyone's grandma. That's she's, she's yeah, she's except old. a little bit more terrifying. My nan wouldn't hurt a fly. She's like the sweetest human being on the <laughs> planet, and the blood letter is slightly terrifying. You know, just some bodies draining in the corner, which we didn't even make any notes about the about the no the blood buckets the blood buckets yeah did you uh listen to the blood letter asmr i did uh i last did week? i did that's that's not reading material no <laughs> i went creepy with it i did like the sound effect of like her cutting the neck and then the blood draining oh, into the bucket and then <laughs> that there's the sound of her filling up her little wine glass <laughs> <laughs> guys uh if you haven't already go subscribe to the crave the book podcast youtube channel that's the only place that you're going to be able to gain access to our asmrs and most of the time they're really nice it's like a snowy walker and catmere academy and it's just like wind and then there's a uh, running with xavier and you get like forest sounds but then there's the blood letters cave and that <laughs> one is just nasty i i had to throw it in though because it was the week that uh that court came out and i'm like we need something more chaotic <laughs> it was definitely chaotic and now i've read this scene and i remember what happened i feel like we should do a san diego beach one yeah we could do we could do uh like nice like sand like underneath the feet and like the surf and tide maybe some seagulls i don't know what san diego smell sounds like but you i can you, imagine that that's what it sounds like sounds like a beach <laughs> Yep. <laughs> some child some child screaming. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> some crabs. <laughs> it's like goddamn Heatherware crab. Go away. <laughs> so oh. we we go through the Bloodletters Cave and she's this like sweet old lady, but she has this like hint of something a lot, lot darker. Um and there's this this scene where she's the blood letter says that gargoyles haven't been her specialty in quite a long while. And I'm so angry at Grace for not pouncing on that and going, oh, I have a million questions. Please, like, help me. I know nothing about being a gargoyle. 
but she just she just doesn't all of a sudden she has absolutely no interest in her like faction yeah that would have been like oh the, jackson just told you that the blood letter is tens of thousand years old or thousands of years old like wouldn't this be a fantastic opportunity to to ask yeah you know just some basic the one questions. person the one person who said that she has been alive for that long to have even met one or knows a bit more than anybody else has and says that it used to be her specialty a specialty isn't something that's like i dabbled a specialty is i know more than the average person and still grace doesn't even like try and shoehorn in at least one question yeah like for example how do i become a gargoyle because I've not managed to do it or <laughs> any reason why I wouldn't be able to remember the four months that I was stuck as a gargoyle. Like, nothing. She doesn't ask anything. Can I age? She doesn't ask anything. She just goes on this weird walk along San Diego Beach and then she, wakes up in some weird room. Because <laughs> she's like, ooh, sad. Like her brain just is immediately, oh my God, beach. I mean, yeah. there is something to be said about the fact that Jackson said, like, don't speak unless the blood letter speaks to you. But the blood letter seems to be like quite warm towards Grace. Um, and I think that her being Jackson's mate has something to be done, like doing with it. It's almost like she's like, I'm accepting you as like my daughter-in-law. Like, you're my son. This is my daughter-in-law. Like, we're family. Um, she is a bit short with her whenever Grace does question her. But this isn't like a, I don't believe what you said or or anything. It would just be a genuine question about herself. And I think the blood letter probably would have been a bit more forthcoming with information than Amka certainly was. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I was a bit frustrated with her in that scene. I was like, God damn it. Why didn't you ask anything? Um, But then all of that gets overshadowed by the fact that we finally get to hear... And to see our boy. It's a boy. Yeah. Speaking so, speaking of which, my <laughs> my boy's coming downstairs yeah. to bring me tea. Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Moore. My boy. It's my boy. Say hi, my boy. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Goodbye. Hello. Love you. Thank you. <laughs> what kind of tea so is it? We... Okay. Thank you. Cherry. It's okay. Everything's cherry in this book. Mm. Cherry. I'm sick. He brought me tea because I'm sick. <laughs> okay. So we so we find out that the blood letter kind of tells Grace to believe and have faith in something other than what she knows to be true. And then all of a sudden she can hear Hudson. Mm -hmm. I don't believe for a second that Grace did anything for this to be the outcome, I think the blood letter did something whilst Grace was doing that. Like, I'm meditating. And then the Hudson, like, Hudson came out because the blood letter did something whilst Grace was having her eyes closed. Like, maybe she was doing some weird spell thing. Because it didn't really make sense. It's like, the, like, you need to just let go of what you believe in and what you know to be true and just have some faith. And then all of a sudden Hudson's there and it's like, what, wait, what? Yeah. I didn't really believe it. It was, I was, I was very blindsided by it. Um, my first <laughs> read through. I mean, I knew that there had to be something to it because everybody kept talking about this Hudson. And, uh, you know, I, I, I had heard whispers of people swooning over Hudson and then he came and I was like, oh. Hello, what? big brother. <laughs> so without any of, like, trying to ignore any of the spoilers that you did have, what were your first impressions of Hudson? Um, It's hard not to acknowledge the spoilers. I, But would you, would, like, would you have heard what he was, because he was, like, the way that Grace describes him was sardonic, um, that he was really sarcastic that he had really like low tone, like he he was really quite mean in the way that he spoke. Yeah, well, I, I saw him like the broody asshole older brother in in anything. You know, didn't you ever have friends <laughs> as a as a teenager and they had like that older brother that was just like 
a jerk, you know, well, and it's, I didn't have friends. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> TV show then. There's always like that older yeah. brother that's like distant and kind of, you know, doing his own thing and making, mocking the children, even if like he's only like a year older. He's got the superiority <laughs> complex. Yeah. That that was, I think, my initial impression. But I definitely, I definitely did believe at first that he was just as sinister as everybody made him out to mm -hmm. be. I thought that it was going to be a story of Grace turns him good. Oh, okay, yeah. Because the way that I started reading, I was like, oh, finally, there's some chemistry. Even even though it it is a case of not necessarily it's positive chemistry there is way more feeling between those two than there ever was between jackson and grace because they constantly because talk they constantly talk they're constantly fighting they're constantly kind of because they're in each other's heads they don't really have a choice um like grace thinks something and hudson already knows how she's feeling or um what her plans are so I think Jackson's already going to be at a disadvantage anyway, because he doesn't have that access. Um, but the more that Hudson speaks, the more I'm just like, there is a back and forth. There's no moments of silence. It just, they constantly, constantly talk. And there's immediately a difference in the way that they speak because there's heat, there's passion, there's anger, even if it's not a good feeling sometimes anger is a fun fun way to start flirting and they definitely do yeah and you can tell he's flirting yeah it's me all kinds of excited <laughs> and that's i mean that's how the best relationships are they start they start like that you know that's well yeah well there's, there was no flirting with jackson whatsoever is it was all really just like it was really cold and then he would give a few hints as to his interest, like the saving her from Flint out of the tree. There was the um, the scene with the chandelier and all those like those kind of things. But there was no, there was no real flirting. There was I, no real like joshing around. Okay, it so was, here's here's my take on it, and it's a, something that YA commonly does. It, it's that intensity is sexy. And intensity is sexy um, when, you know, sprinkled in every once in a while. But can you imagine, like, for example, all of Twilight, can you imagine Edward maintaining that constant intensity forever? Like, at least in Breaking Dawn, he gets a little bit, like, funnier. He smiles a little bit more. Um, but just that that straightforward so intense, serious, all the time. Like, obviously, if you're with a guy who's just, like, the class clown all the time, that's also not good. It's it's a balance. You need to have that balance where they can pivot between intensity and knowing when to be serious and knowing when to joke and be funny. Mm -hmm. And And the thing is, yeah, Jackson is very intense, and he does joke with Grace, but because it's so... It's not his thing... It's Grace's thing that he's kind of badly adopted with the telling the the jokes. It's not like he's genuinely being funny. The joke is that the jokes aren't funny. Therefore, it doesn't help to make him funny. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I definitely think that there, that there is an issue where Jackson is serious 90 percent of the time and the times where he is like trying to joke because he's so serious the 90 percent of the time grace doesn't know that he's having fun and yeah. then it comes across as a bit clunky like the scene with the um joking about the giant teacher mm -hmm. and how he eats children because he's never joked before grace is like what is going on like are you serious are you talking the truth um Whereas if you start the relationship already fun, you're able to have fun later down on the line and it will just be easy. Um, I also noticed that there are questions that Grace has, uh, particularly on the journey to the Bloodletters Cave. There were points where she wanted to ask questions, like she wanted to ask him what his experience of fading was. But she went, oh, I don't want to lower the tone or I don't I don't want to sour the mood. So I just I, I'll pocket that question for later. Whereas she probably could have asked him 
but she was already feeling like she can't talk to him. And that's not a good sign in a relationship to already have those barriers set up where you don't feel like you can ask really innocuous and innocent questions. That's not something that's going to upset him. Yeah, it's it's different if but it's she, like a question that you know is going to like sour a mood. Like if you're ha- like you're out on a date and everything's really really fun, like it's it's fine to not like bring up questions about you know someone's like dead parent or something. Like that's that's understandable. But when it comes to innocent questions, if you find yourself tiptoeing or even I, I would even say you know relationships where you need to ask a favor like. Uh, this is this is adult Starla PSA coming out. I know everybody loves those. <laughs> they come every time. <laughs> they do. They do because I'm old. I'm about to be even older on the 28th. Um, but if you're afraid to go to your partner and say, hey, can you do the dishes? Can you toss in a load of laundry? Can you take the trash out? Because you're afraid that they're going to be mad or that they're going to respond by lashing out at you. When otherwise yeah. you would be the one who would have to to do that thing. Yeah. You know, it's that's that's also insanely unhealthy. It's it's communication. Every every problem in YA can be solved with communication. So even though they're bickering, at least Hudson <laughs> it, and Grace it, it, are it communicating. Makes books, it makes books a lot shorter if they had a healthier relationship with people. But yeah. <laughs> If they could communicate, half of the problems wouldn't exist, but then therefore we wouldn't have half of the pages and chapters we do. <laughs> That's very true. Like half, half of the problems in like TV shows, in films, in books, is always because someone feels like they can't hurt somebody else's feelings because they found out a secret and they don't feel ready to tell each other. And then and then they and then the other person finds out. And then they go, why didn't you tell me? And then they have to kind of say, oh, I didn't want to hurt your feelings. And it's like, well, now my feelings are even more hurt because you didn't trust me in the first place. Yeah. 90, 99% of them. <laughs> so she wakes up with Hudson, giggity, and um, she finds out that she's in a cage. Bloodletter and Jackson have put her in a cage. And she is pissed because... Not that the blood letter put her in a cave, but the Jackson let her. And I'm like, do you really think that he'd have any choice in the matter? <laughs> like, from what we understand, this woman is terrifying. And you think that your boyfriend has control over his adopted mother, who is tens of thousands years old and can make things poof with her mind. Um... But she gets even more heated with Hudson within this cave and the argument and this this argument happens where she actually finds out that the reason why Cole was hurt was because Hudson needed a item for the spell that will help him come out of her body. And uh, it was the eye tooth of an alpha werewolf and the atome that he stole, is it atome? Atam? Atami. I have no idea. <laughs> that he stole from Anka had the moonstone from a warlock, and now all they need is the bloodstone from a born vampire and the full bone of a dragon. Um, and then he will come out of her body and he will like be able to like restore his body. But they also discuss whether they want to procure a fifth item to be able to make him mortal again. So remove his vampire and remove his powers. And to get that, they need to go and get a heartstone of the unkillable beast, which is the first time that the sex... So within this scene that we've read, we have been introduced to two new characters, both that don't have a name. They just have like a, a title. reputation. Yeah. A title, a title's a good one. Yeah, so um, you you already know that people are really important if they don't have a name. They just like the queen or whatever. Um, so we found out that the unkillable beast, they need to get this heartstone to to kind of nullify Hudson's powers. Hudson obviously is hell bent on not letting that happen, and is saying no, no, no. You only need the four. You just need the four. Uh, meanwhile, Jackson and Grace are on the same playing field with the idea that that's what they want to do 
Yeah, it's not like the, um, the name and, Unkillable is right in the Yeah, I know. The and title. the way that the blood letter's talking about it as well, she doesn't seem to be particularly keen about them going to do it, um, despite what Hudson is capable of. And the way she speaks about Hudson as well is very... Um, I would say praiseworthy, but it's not. She speaks she speaks of him very highly, but in terms of power and abilities and what he can do and what he is capable of and all of these, but they're not necessarily in a positive way. <laughs> um, but she seems to be very adamant that Grace needs to build this wall against Hudson so that he's not able to control her anymore. Um, and then that is where our scene ends so we've we, like literally we've we've been we've been on on a journey and then the whole cave scene was nine chapters well so um didn't we that end was fun. unless i read an extra an extra i think you did because, because I, we, we there was a bit where she was talking about building a wall and says that you already have and then it says turns out that building a wall wasn't that hard and then she wakes up in catmere Okay, because I I ended I ended on um where she is in her room eating Cherry Garcia with Macy, so I must well, like feel feel free to go and uh, dive deep into that chapter. No, I didn't read that one. No, this sounds like a good <laughs> this sounds like a good stopping point. We can okay. we can we can end it here since the next one is okay. kind of its own scene. Okay, okay, so let's head into spoilers. Spoilers. Woo! <laughs> So there was a there was a point where um I realized that the blood letter is supposed to be this like woman who is in hiding so, like she's in secret but just how many people even know about her because I, I Amka knows about her Uncle Finn knows about her they know, they don't just know who she is but they know her reputation like is this just from history and rumors or have they met her like <laughs> Um, is she is she not in secret? It was just it was very well, well known where well, she is. It's and <laughs> kind of kind of court spoilers. Um, Grace's parents obviously knew. Yeah, and Jackson's parents obviously also know, and Uncle Finn knows. I don't know. I don't. It's very. It's the, very... literally the blood letter was mentioned for the first time in the book. And then, like two people in that scene, Finn was like, "Are you knew sure?" Of her. Yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't. It wasn't even like they had to ask a few different people before they found out somebody did know about her. It was literally the people in the room knew her. So she she's really famous in the yeah uh, in the vamp community. Because I was like, I know that she she was part of the war, and that's the way she got her name. Uh, spoilers for court. She, that she was she was in the, this big war, and then that's where she got the name Bloodletter. So I'm, I'm just wondering whether that was part of like the history books and that's how people just know the name on that. And that's why they know that she's terrifying, not necessarily knowing who exactly she is. Yeah. Yeah. That was just a question that I had because I was like, maybe everybody knows about her <laughs> and everybody knows where she lives. She's they're just too afraid to. Well, I mean, it could be one of those things where they know like the general idea, but who's going to bumble around and around yeah. the North Pole looking for her? This is like yeah the the protections on the on the door as well for the cave were for Cyrus, and I was just imagining him just like sat outside the door just waiting for the day that <laughs> the the day because he's like I know where you live. <laughs> she's she's actually um, Mrs. Claus because she's up at the North I mean, Pole. Some little it's a it's a good theory. Yeah, they, little kids bumble over <laughs> to her. <laughs> Her magical ice She'd cave. She'd give terrible presents. <laughs> she would give terrible, awful presents. That's a, that's a really quite frightening the hollow, imagery. The hollow shell of a drained person, <laughs> a skin all gray. Where does she put, where does she hide the bodies? I mean, really, she's not eating them. They're all gray uh, and pro drained. I mean. Surely they'd attract bears if she just threw them out of a window. She can't leave. She physically can't leave her cave. Hmm. Yeah, now now I have questions. Is there a like a room, like a closet for the Cuz it's frozen. <laughs> like it would be like sticking them in the freezer. She's been there for a thousand years. How many bodies are we talking? <laughs> well, think about every time you've 
heard of somebody disappearing, you know, going hiking or whatever in the uh, in the Arctic, and I'm sure that they're somewhere in her closet next to her um, <laughs> next to her knitting supplies. I I'm surprised that she doesn't have somebody like working for her. Like she doesn't have like a servant, like a Jeeves. Yeah, she does could... like the sweeping. Yeah, you know, just someone to clean up those bodies, to take them out for her, toss them in the ocean. And to like, to tempt, to lure, because she said she lures people into her cave. How? She lures tourists. How does she do that? She just, she, she do the sweet old nanny routine, like, hello, cooey dears, would you like to come in for a spot of tea? And she's get, People get, out in the Arctic would be like, what the hell is going on? Surely they would be suspicious. She's just got like those good smells of like baking cookies wafting from her cave. Yeah. She, like, again, would attract bears. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Yeah, I'm just a bit like, hmm. And if she's only drinking humans, there is no way that she'd be able to even go out during daylight. No. Or or again, still leave the cape. So how is she, how is she getting people in there? Maybe she's also eating bears. You don't know. Maybe. Can, Maybe. I, it would probably be an easier way to tempt people. People are immediately suspicious, whereas hungry bears... they don't They don't give a shit. Like, oh, you got yeah. cookies? Because <laughs> <laughs> we all know the main food group for bears is cookies. Absolutely. Cookies. <laughs> cookies and babies. That's what bears love. She she could absolutely just, like, make a, a mirage of a warm teepee. I don't know. What, 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 would, what would tempt you in? Not, a, you were a, hiker, not a warm teepee. <laughs> If you if you were a hiker, what would be the thing that would tempt you in, but also look the least suspicious for you to stop by? A Starbucks, because Starbucks are everywhere. <laughs> You're like, yep, this makes sense. <laughs> I've got six Starbucks in driving distance from my house, each of them like five minutes apart. A Starbucks would not, I, I would go to the North Pole and be like, yep, there's the North Pole Starbucks. Yep. All right. <laughs> So um, this like follows on uh, with my next theory. It was just like she apparently would figure out long before you'd get there that you're on the way. Because Jax is like, because Grace is like, do we call ahead? <laughs> do we call ahead? Surely if she's this bad, we don't want to just drop in on her like unannounced. And he's like, nah, she'll know. She'll know we're on our way. How? How does she know that we're on our way? Because she seems to be interrupted every other time we meet. Her. <laughs> yeah, she seems she seems very disgruntled. Maybe maybe she can smell like Jackson having been around him for so long. Maybe she's got super smell or super hearing, and then it's <laughs> it, maybe she's maybe just, she gets like five minutes notice. Yeah, she's attuned to him specifically because when yeah. Grace goes with Hudson, they they surprise her. Yeah. And uh, any other time after as well, she's like, well, I wasn't expecting visitors. Right. So I'm like, well, you do live in a cave in the middle of the Arctic and the only people that really know how to live, like get to your house are Jackson and now Hudson. So, um, it, yeah, I just, I'm just a bit, I'm a bit concerned why Jackson thinks that she'll know when they're always going to be turning up. Because she clearly doesn't. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't think that there. She's got a phone out there. Service is probably awful. No, she's got a landline. Yeah, she's got old the, lady. Old ladies don't have mobiles. <laughs> there's just one like telephone pole with an infinitely long like cable going straight through the Arctic, and you don't yeah. know where the next pole is. And and she she answers hello blood letter resident, <laughs> <laughs> and she answers with her own mobile number or her own number because for some reason. Elderly people also do that as well. You're like, I know which number I just rang. Why are you reciting? She's, it? She puts you on hold and it's all those old songs that Jackson says are his favorite, like like Brown Eyed Girl. <laughs> like, oh, uh, yes. Yes. Because you know, we should do Blood Letter Hold Music. <laughs> yeah, Blood Letter <laughs> Hold ASMR. Music. Uh, so um, there is a point where Grace says that Jackson is going to be here as long as this mountain is. And we now know that Grace is not only a gargoyle, but there's a possibility that she has way more magic 
than just a gargoyle because the blood letter says like you have infinite infinitely more power than you realize and um makes me wonder like she might not age the same as a vampire so what is her and hudson's life cycle going to be like hmm because she's 17 he is like 200 and they look the same is is there is there a bell curve like <laughs> i'm assuming that for the sake of the story that they will age the same oh of course they will it's just natural progression yeah it it would only it would only make sense and not be creepy if they didn't age the same if i yeah. were tracy i would write it that they age the same because anything yeah. else would just be icky or the fact that Grace can just maybe control time a little. Just a little bit. <laughs> she maybe, maybe maybe she can just freeze herself and kind of put herself on pause, like you said. It's like a perfect face mask, you know? Best anti-wrinkle. Yeah. It's like any time she, she notices a crow's foot, she's like, no! <laughs> freeze. <laughs> Reverse. <laughs> Rewind. Uh, yeah, I reckon she's also probably going to be very replenished if she has like a mud bath. <laughs> yeah, she needs. She or does a good nice therapy, nice gravel Hot bath stone therapy. Yeah, she can go into a tar pit. You know, <laughs> she's got earth magic. She can do stuff. She does. She goes in for a hot stone massage, and the the massage guy comes back in the room, and all the stones <laughs> are gone. He's like, "Wait a minute, <laughs> where'd they go?" Yeah, she he's absorbs like, ah, them. Look at me. Because um, I, I mean, like Alistair or the unkillable beast was there for a thousand years, and he can't—he doesn't look young, but he looks like middle-aged. I get the impression that he looked that way when he and the blood letter also met. Because I got the vampire special edition. Um, yeah, and they. <laughs> they they danced they, when he oh, first when yeah. they I, it has the scene where they first like laid eyes on each other and the blood letter was thinking that she was gonna be all badass and like i'm gonna because she was the queen of the vampire court at the time how and, disappointed do you reckon he was when he went back to her cave and was like oh at the time she was at she was at the vampire court when they um when they mated and, uh, <laughs> ew. Ew. <laughs> when, when they were when they were mated and she described him as being kind of like a a middle-aged guy at the time okay. so i'm kind of picturing him you know who i picture uh, their, him? their timelines have paused now their timelines are out of work i picture him to look like jurian from game of thrones um not jurian um Jur jurian that's that's freaking court of thorns and roses no um, um oh jorah Daenerys, oh, like Khalees, Khalees, uh, yeah, um, Daenerys, like bodyguard dude. Yeah, yeah, that's how. That's kind of how. Ah, it, okay. Little, little longer hair, but I kind of picture him like that age. Like you could fantasize about him, but you choose not to. Yeah, that's a little weird, you know. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm almost it's like he's hot, but he's not my age. Yeah, mm. that's how I felt the whole time. Danny was like, he's and he's like swooning over her, and I'm like, Danny girl, please, I, you know what, I love him, but please, please don't stop. I couldn't figure out if there were, if he was in love with her, or if it was a fatherly relationship, but yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> so I've only got, I think I've only got three notes in this whole thing. So um, first, <laughs> Jackson said, or no, I, was it Jackson or the blood letter? I think it was the blood letter who said, peace can't last with Hudson inside you. And I was like, hey, 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 no, it cannot. <laughs> There's no peace with Hudson inside you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got like the hot it's true it's true yeah you i mean you don't want peace when that's no. In there. <laughs> no nobody wants that's that's not a fun relationship um so other question why can't we touch the blood letter everybody's like don't touch the blood letter don't let her touch you why maybe she'd just eat you yeah but uh, there or was is it like I felt, I felt like it was a sign of respect that it was just like she a, wanted to touch Grace though and and Grace was still like don't no she can't touch me like she's conscious not to not be touched. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I which just, uh, maybe 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 it's like ew wrinkles. I thought that she was like had the power to do something like maybe she smelled. Maybe she smelled. Um, it's not like there's hot showers. <laughs> 
Oh no, she's that's a good point. She hasn't been she hasn't been showering. I mean, we know that Macy can make cold showers, but it still required her to be able to work with existing plumbing through her magic at the uh, gargoyle mm. court. She was able to work with the existing plumbing system and create a cold shower, but at the at the uh, Bloodletters cave, there wouldn't none of that would be there. You'd have to be like excavating the Arctic to be able to shower. I like to think that she has a dreadlocks. She has, well, that would that would be um that would be more convenient. It, you know, my, it would be alternative. Can you imagine an old granny vampire with dreads? Yeah, that'd make her that would make her badass. My dad, my dad is like fifth, fifth, what fifty? I don't know how to. I have no idea how old my dad is. Fifty three. I'm gonna guess that he's got dreadlocks down to his butt. I'm just thinking like that would be this like yeah like when you when you're that old and you've been there for that long and you're that isolated and you don't really have very many visitors you could just be like I'm gonna do whatever I want I'm gonna look however I want I don't have to fit to social rules I can have dreads I can I can do whatever I want and I just imagine her just being like unapologetically just cool <laughs> I would not I would not but old. I would not strive to be cool if I knew no one would see me. Um, just like sweatpants. Well, just like t-shirt. right now, you know the the hoodie brand that makes the giant hoodies that are like that you like live in those the big, hoodies. The hoodies. I'm wearing an hoodie brand shirt that literally goes to my feet with the pizza on it, and I haven't brushed my hair since like yesterday morning because I'm sick. So <laughs> I feel like this is what my um. What my aesthetic would be if I knew that no one would see me, like homeless. Did you just say boneless? I said homeless. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, boneless, boneless too. It's a puddle on the floor, just like Cyrus was boneless. You know, it's like yeah, like the like Harry, the Harry Potter arm. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, it's that scene makes me so uncomfortable. Some skelligro. <laughs> Ew. Um. So my last one was that, um, and you were like, who's Zafrina? Zafrina, I, I pulled this from um, from New Moon, uh, or not New Moon, uh, Breaking Dawn. Zafrina also, if we're going to do our, like, where we said Jasper and Mackay have the same power, we always kind of translate things over. Zafrina had the power of visual projection where she could manipulate um your perception of the environment and make it seem like, you know, she, she did the rainforest thing when they first arrived at the Cullen house where she made it seem like there was a rainforest around, um, everybody. But yeah, I, I kind of, that's how I kind of took the, the blood letters power is that visual production. And then it made me wonder, like, there are a lot of occasions where she could have used visual projection, like during the war and stuff. I wonder if she did. I wonder if she actually use that power at all i'm wondering what powers she used at all because she just seemed to be known as the blood letter for just kind of like cutting people's heads off but it wasn't anything demigoddy yeah that she mentioned <laughs> i i would i would put them I don't know. Where, where would I send them before I killed them? What would I do to distract them? That's that's a hard question. Ball pool. A whirlpool? Yeah. Like, then they think that they're in a whirlpool, so they're just spinning around in, in the yeah, circle on the battlefield. Yeah, just like getting, getting dizzy. No. They don't know where they are. They're really disorientated, and they <laughs> might just hit them on the head. Bonk. <laughs> or I would put them in their bedroom. Or make them think that they have no clothes on. Or <laughs> I'm a psychological warfare kind of. Person. Yeah, I was going to say you're 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 going way more extreme. I'm like I would put them at the beach so they would be super confused about the water, and then I would. Stop. <laughs> I <don't> <laughs> you make them imagine that they're in the sea and drowning. Ah! They're just laying on the ground, like flopping around like fish in the middle of a battlefield. No, I was just imagining them doing the like, you know, the dance move where they have the hand over the nose and just go. That's what I was imagining. All right. And they think they're drowning and have no oxygen. And then they're like. I love that sound effect. That's great. 
and that and that is battles with amber <laughs> <laughs> battle scenes with amber okay those were my only points um that i had <laughs> so the rest is yours so we 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 know that hudson has been kind of following grace along this entire time so why did he need directions to the cave um I like mean, surely he was he knew where it was because he followed them. <laughs> well, I mean, ha, ha, that would be like me saying, hey, Amber, next time we come to Ohio, I want you to drive and navigate around and I will tell you where I want you to take me. Would you be able to do it? I'd be able to get you to the end of your road. And if you said which direction it would be, I'd be able to get you to Starbucks or um, BBW or uh, B-dubs, B- not BBW. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> big, beautiful women, Amber. Yeah, I could take you there too. <laughs> <laughs> Bath and, ba- uh, Bath and Body Nobles. Barnes and Nobles. I, I'd be, I, I think that I would probably be able to take you to places, but I would need to know which direct, because you're... Your house is p- perfectly in the middle of, w- like, where to go. Our house. And, like, like that direct, like, that junction, country. I wouldn't know which which way to go to be able to get to either destination. Yeah. Plus, Google Maps is a great thing. Yeah, but Hudson isn't pulling out Google Maps, nor do I think that they're, it would. They uh... did, because they got a pin. They, he, like, Jackson sent them a pin. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, and then uh, there's a bit where Jackson is doing like these hand motions to like remove the the wards. Surely Hudson had seen that as well. And then it made me think that because vampires can run really, 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 really fast, can they also see really, really, really fast? I mean, you would almost have to because your response rate would have to be would have to be yeah. Faster. So surely he he'd have seen he'd he'd have seen like even yeah. He did. He did. Apparently, he had to have a refreshers course, like less than a week later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, um, and there's the scene about the bears, right? And the bears. Grace is absolutely terrified about the concept of coming across bears, and then when she does the same journey with Hudson and they see bears, there is just an absolute calm about her. And I don't know whether it is that she just feels safer with Hudson or whether she feels safer as herself because she has more control of her gargoyle powers and she knows how to protect herself. They're up in or, a tree, though. Like a yeah, they are up a tree, but it's it's more like a, like, it, it. I think that it's because she has, like, that earth magic about her that she now knows that, like, bears. I, she now knows that bears bears she bears. rules the bears she rules she's the queen of the bears no I, she is the bear queen i think that i think that it's just i think that it's a little bit of um foreshadowing where here's this uh. thing that was originally really really scary and it had her super nervous and then she actually encountered that thing and given the proper circumstances when fostered in a nice calm and safe environment that thing that was once very very terrifying can actually be pretty magical and maybe her you know misunderstanding of what she thought those bears were like similar to how she originally interpreted hudson and what she thought he was going to be like yeah. or or we could just be projecting way too much into the scene <laughs> yeah. but that that would be my guess was that it was it a was just of- it was the exact same journey and one was a fear and one was a a sight of absolute awe and wonder. Yeah. And it was the exact same thing that she was going to be seeing or encountering. Um, and it was just a, like a parallel that I noticed. Um, there's a bit where it says, there are a lot of reasons that people live where they live. It's not always about choice. Um, and I've, I don't know why Jackson mentions this. And I don't know whether it's because he is saying that it wasn't his choice to go and live with the blood letter. Because it, 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 he says it in direct retaliation to Grace wondering why the blood letter lives in an Arctic cave in the middle of nowhere. But he, he says it with a bit more bite that means that 
there's more than one meaning to it. And I think it's like he really did not want to go and live with her. Oh, I mean, uh, in the um, this is in the Covet Vampire Court bonus chapter. Um, his mom originally, like, she was kind of in that forced relationship with with Cyrus as well. So, and and we know that their relationship yeah. isn't great. So maybe it was like just an overall like his his experience is that you don't always get to choose what you want because grace wouldn't grace yeah. didn't choose Catmere either there's it's there's a no. whole there's a lot of people in this book who are kind of stuck living where they don't want to be i don't yeah, know it's all like they're all a victim of circumstance yeah and things are out of their control but yeah um and th there's a the scene where she wakes up to act like visually seeing hudson for the first time and we get to hear that he's next to a lamp and Grace is on a bed. And I'm wondering whether this is his lair. Because why would she be seeing a bed and a lamp? Like, I thought that it was just in the in the cell, that she, the cage that she was locked in. Oh, that you reckon that there was a bed as well? I thought that she was sitting on a bed. No, she was lying down in the bed. She was like, a, she thought that she was asleep waking up. Um, and then Hudson said, I thought that the blood letter turned her to stone. Uh, like froze her. And then moved her to the cage. And because she was a gargoyle again, she could see him. But this time, she was brought back by the blood letter. Because there was a point where Grace was talking about how um, she heard that Jackson had gone to the bloodletter four times whilst Grace was a gargoyle, and the bloodletter told him every time to bring Grace to her, and he never did. Uh -huh. Makes me think that whether she was probably the only one that was going to be able to get Grace out of being a gargoyle, like, out of out of the control of Grace, that she was able to do that. And I'm wondering whether she put her into a gargoyle for the f a few seconds. I feel like... If and then that's why she saw him. Hmm. I feel like if that was the case, there there would be a little bit more... Because Jackson knows that Grace still isn't aware of how to turn into a gargoyle. And that's something that they want yeah. to figure out. Unless he just didn't but see it. Well, yeah. But she can do, she can do, she because she did it to Hudson in Covet. She froze him, yeah. She froze him, but she didn't have to touch him. No, she just did it. Yeah, so I'm wondering whether she did the same to Grace, and then because she was frozen, kind of gargoyled, she was then able to see Hudson, and then the blood letter brought her back on her terms, and therefore she brought Hudson back with her. I thought that rather that than was the power start restarting. I thought that that was her power to let... I thought that she was freezing time. I thought that that was the, her freezing time, not necessarily freezing them. I don't know. I just think that that scene doesn't make sense. No, there's there's definitely a, a gap in there. I do agree. Yeah. Um, and I'm just trying to trying to make sense of it using the powers of the people in the room, and it still doesn't quite fit. Um and that's why I thought, oh, maybe this is Hudson's lair, because why would she choose to see that room when she was initially in the beach and then she was in the sand and then it went black and then she woke up and she saw a bed and a lamp. And then Hudson was like, oh, and speaking of people who are evil or whatever, <laughs> then Grace notices that the shadows are a cage and she turns around and then she's in a cage. I'm like, it's all like manipulation of what she's seeing visually. And I'm just like, well, who, who, who's choosing what she's seeing? Yeah. I just thought that Is there it were. Is it Was it Grace? I thought that it was more of like a, like a cell, like a jail cell. Yeah. But it had a, it had like the. Oh, butcher. see, I was imagining like a birdcage. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like with a rounded top. <laughs> yeah. Like swinging from the ceiling <laughs> because she definitely has had some men in there before. Oh Yeah. 
nice collection of like sexy dancers in cages. Oh yeah. <laughs> Blood letter and her sexy yes. her sexy dance men. Mm-hmm. All right. Um so there is a uh there's a quote that I just had to write down and it made me feel all kinds of happy and it was Hudson saying we're kind of attached in case you didn't notice. <laughs> sexy. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just st- a sarcastic thing that he threw out there because Grace was like, how did you know we were going here? And why are you still here? And he's like, we're kind of attached if you didn't notice. Uh, <laughs> um, and then I wrote, Hudson using magic through Grace to crush Jackson's heart. Hashtag discuss. <laughs> this was really breezed over. Grace doesn't possess that power. Hudson doesn't possess that power, but it was definitely Hudson using Grace and using the mating bond to squeeze Jackson's heart. And it happened for like a second. Oh, when he attacked him? Yeah. But I'm like, what what were they even doing? Like, and why couldn't they do that again? (laughs) There's a lot of, there's a lot of instances where that would have been a useful um, attack mechanism. And it is, does it was it just along the mating bond, in which case is it only only Jackson that can get hurt through that, or was that Hudson using Grace's witchy witchy woo powers and channeling? In which case, why didn't they use that more? Yeah, I think it was more of the uh, needing to throw in the sinister factor, like oh, even though that even though I am contained within your body, I am still dangerous. I can still. Well, yeah, I mean, I could, yeah, you can do that, but at the same time, you'd think that one of one of Hudson's own powers would have manifest, such as Grace persuading Jackson to do something, right? But it wasn't; it was a power that neither of them were able to do, and it was, if anything, it was more like Jackson's power was leaking through the mating bond, and Hudson was able to use it against him. Yeah, because I mean, Hudson can siphon energy from yep. Jackson through the mating bond. So I'm just wondering whether he siphoned magic through Jackson's mating bond and used Jackson's telekinesis against his heart. In which case that's dope as shit and would have been a a very useful power in yeah, all of these upcoming battles. Like imagine, right? Grace is able to channel magic right? We know this. Hudson is able to persuade people. We know this too. What if at one point there is something that Grace needs to persuade somebody to do and she has absolutely no qualms about making them do it against their will because she's queen. She can do whatever she wants. She channels Hudson's powers through and is able to just persuade them to do it. And Hudson has no idea. (laughs) They can just tag tag team unwillingly. Yeah, tag team unwillingly. They have no idea what what is what's going on because, like, it, to Hudson, it might just feel like Grace is kind of like squeezing the mating bond, making sure he's okay. But meanwhile, she's like, <laughs> mine. <laughs> it's like it's like stealing fries off of your your boyfriend's plate but yeah like i'm i'm wondering whether she's like looking into his eyes squeezing the mating bond and she's like can you do the dishes yeah sweetie i'll I do think, anything I, th- I think you want to do the dishes <laughs> he's yeah he's got that he's got that kind of jedi like mind These are power not the droids you're looking for <laughs> yeah he's got a little bit of that jedi power which he only really hudson only uses that like no, he doesn't. Remember, he, he he does he does use it. He uses it in the gi- uh, in the dragon's dungeon when he's um, incarcerated by. Oh, you're uh, right. N- 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 Nuri, N- N- wasn't Nuri? Um, Grace finds him what? just like out of his cell and making the dragons play ball between yeah. themselves. Because there was the scene in the library where he um convinces yeah convinces her that she needs a she's got a headache and she needs to go home and no get the one the one with um where where he's already out of 
I think it's in Covet where he's studying in the he library. He doesn't. He's he, he doesn't use it. Or yeah. If he does use it, he does it really subtly. But he's got bracelets on. That means that he can't use yeah. his powers. And he says to Grace, "Just because I don't have my powers doesn't mean that I'm not a vampire." And she's like, "I don't know what you mean." And he's like, "That was a real newbie werewolf, and I am terrifying to him." Yeah, because it was like a like a first year, and he said, "Like you will, yeah. you will turn around right now." And then the the kid like turned around and left. Yeah. It's, it's really funny that like Grace is like, <gasps> so you managed to do it without your braces working? Do you do you have your bracelets off? The bracelet's not working at all. And he's like, no, they are working. And then like a week later, he's like, Haha, they never worked. <laughs> yeah, technically it didn't work. It he he knew how to, yeah, he knew how to mess with it. But okay, so mm. you've got one more biggin. Uh, it's not really a biggin. It's it's like a um. I think that the blood letter knew that they would be unable to get the heart stone. Hence her annoyance at being questioned about it. She knew that it was her mate. She knew Grace would not be able to do it because it's Grace. And she also knew that it was her grandfather. So even if she was able to, like, get the unkillable beast to turn into a human and get the heart stone or whatever, it was her grandfather. Um, so it was going to cause issues anyway. And they were most likely going to die trying, like hence the unkillable beast title. Um, but secretly, I don't think that she wanted Hudson to be human because then she would no longer be his demigod. Okay. I think... Like she would be losing, she would be losing a, a supernatural to the human side. Okay. That that makes sense. I, I took it more as she um, she knew... That because Grace was also a gargoyle, that likely there would be a, a method of communication between them once she got close enough to him, and that maybe she could be the ticket that could finally set him free. As but opposed she would to... know that, like the Heartstone, she would never get the Heartstone because if she set him free, the Heartstone meant that he had to kill himself, he right? Had to give his heart. So she was like, "You're going to lose at every stage, so it's not going to be possible for you." Yeah. I think it was more like it, she was killing two birds with one stone where she was sending them on this kind of fool's errand. But at the same mm -hmm. time, she also thought that maybe it would be an opportunity for them to get him free. Yeah. And get the crown. And get the crown. Did she know? Did the blood letter know that he had the crown? He had stone? the crown before. I mean, it would he's had the crown the whole time. But did she know that? Like, she, I know that he I knew that know. she that she was supposed to have it, but huh. I'm also wondering why. So this is this is 100% court spoiler. I'm wondering why Alistair didn't have any of the poison. Was he? It was he st stone gargoyled before, or was he? It, uh, would, it wouldn't matter because both times, both ways. They would eventually get poisoned. The either either the gargoyle army were stuck in the time bubble, or were actual gargoyles in the normal time world uh, to stop themselves from being poisoned. But Alistair was fine and conscious as well. He wasn't just like full statue. He was a moving creature this whole time, and then he was also a human gargoyle for a few weeks before grace is able to fulfill the trials yeah and he never speaks to her again like for the entire time like she, like she she sent like the the elixir of life or whatever it's called down the strings or anything and at no point did mr gargi king message her and be like oh thank you for doing that Right. Oh, you've you've you achieved see? this this impossible yeah. task. Instead, he was playing bloody nookie with <laughs> grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, realistically, if you'd been away from your husband that long, wouldn't you want to go play? I don't. I don't like. Oh, the... I would if I if I was yes, but for him, he has to go back and sleep with like a ninety year old. See, I know that that was just your your British coming out, but I don't like the idea of bloody nookie at all. <laughs> That's I don't like yeah. any, I don't like anything about what you the, just said. The crumblies are shagging. We don't uh 
bloody is not something that we say here in the Americas. To... No, you don't say snogging either. No, those are, I thought that was like a Harry Potter term that I thought was just <laughs> funny. I thought that it was just a funny word. that they Snog. Threw. That's one that they threw in for the children <laughs> where they wanted to not, you know. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was just a term no. that they threw in so it would go over the children's heads. Nah, so. it's, a, it's a very tonguey kiss. Yeah. That's just Dude, there's no French about it. I just, don't know why you say French kiss. That's, that's Fran- weird. French in. Yeah. French in. Like it's become a verb. Fran- French in. <laughs> He's French in under the steps. Swap and spit under the steps. Tonguing under the no. steps. Tugging. Tongue tonguing. Oh tonguing. I was like, tonguing. tugging is an entirely tugging. different <laughs> that's, Yeah, that's a different <laughs> that's a different thing. Yeah. Tonguing. Tonguing. No. Smoochin. Smoochin. Smoochin is like cute. You, we, don't say, we, don't, we don't say smoochin. Little smoochin smooch. is cringy. Little smooch. Give me a little smooch. Grandma gives you a smooch. That's you go to grandma's house, she gives you a smooch. She gives you one Oh, of them, if my nan gave me a smooch, she'd be arrested. She'd give you one of them gross, sloppy Ooh. wet grandma smooches on the cheek. <laughs> no, so it's kiss kiss. Kiss kiss straight straight up kiss is that's it. And then snog is anything where it becomes more passionate. Um but I think that you stop snogging the moment you turn about twenty and realize that, like, you know, like, this is this is juvenile. It's making out. We don't out. say the words. Yeah, making out again. We're like, we're like, yo, want to make out? It's like, no, we're just kissing because you realize that the partner you're with doesn't care about the terminology as long as he's getting the action. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, um, now that we're at the end of the episode, uh, comment on. A post or or message us at Crave Series Aesthetic on Instagram or comment in the YouTube uh, comments down below. Let us know what you call making out where you're from. <laughs> what do yeah. you call and it? As colloquial as bat is better. Like the most the most colloquial word will win. Yeah. Don't know what you'll win. You'll win fame. You'll win fame and fortune and notoriety. Speaking of which, um, just before we end the episode, we did have a very long email from a fan who had just listened to the first Ooh. episodes. Um, I think that her name was uh, Madeline, but she she signed her name as uh, Team Hudson's biggest fan. And she, <laughs> I doubt that. She sent us uh, <laughs> three paragraphs about why Hudson is the best and is better than Jackson <laughs> and should marry her. And then she concludes it with, that is why Hudson is superior to Jackson, and I just wanted to participate in the Craving of Crave series podcast. <laughs> so she's thank only- Thank you for your email. Yeah, thank you for your email, um, Madeline. I, you're only on the first we'll take episode, these, so- We'll take these points into consideration. <laughs> <laughs> we we love the feedback. Guys, if you ever want to email us, um, feel free to. We have- uh, a gmail address at crave the book podcast at gmail.com um i look at it every once in a while it's not something that i obsess over but you can also tag us on instagram you can dm us on instagram we're pretty good at looking at those um and comment on our youtube channel we need more comments on our youtube youtube yes youtube even if you listen to this podcast on spotify make sure that you go to the youtube channel and uh subscribe to that because you get asmrs every sunday night and those are meant to be listened to while you read you can listen to them while you're studying sleeping uh cleaning the house whenever you need some ambient tracks and this week we had some participation from (laughs) amber's genuine authentic british husband scott My, my hubby scott scott was hudson and let me just say that, edit, like, I know that everybody liked it, but editing that was the most awkward thing ever <laughs> because I was like, I had to pretend like I am Grace and this is Hudson, except it's not because it's Amber's husband. And it was very, it was very strange. Amber, did you listen to it? <laughs> I did. I did. How did it, and how did I, it feel? I can... So I played it in the car and Scott didn't even notice that it was him. <laughs> So we we um we went to get fuel. So we went to get our our gas or whatever you call it, and um yeah, I started playing it whilst he was pumping <laughs> pumping the car full, and uh, he got in and he didn't even notice it was playing. <laughs> That's how good the background noises are. <laughs> did he? Did... And um, I could tell that it was him, and I could tell that it was you, but I didn't know what any of you were saying. Yeah, you have to really. And that's the good thing. 
you have to almost be listening to it like at home or with headphones on, but we recreated the laundry room scene. Um, I, I kind of stretched it out a little bit longer there. We do play the, the two songs. Um, good feeling and shut up and dance are, are in there. Um, yeah, it was that one was and fun. Some washing machines. Yeah, and the washing machines, the the <laughs> the water. We like, apparently filling. need to do more. We need to do more voiced ones. But I can't think of any other scenes that like need voices for it to work. That's the most iconic scene of all the scenes in the yeah. book. I think that that's the one that is the most iconic. It is it is the most special scene of all the books. So. But I mean, if you guys have any suggestions, feel free to let us know. But uh, yeah, go. I think we need. I think we need like Irish castle vibes. Yeah, that would like be- knights, knights of shining armor, kind of clunking around. Um, clinkety clinkety clunk. Uh, Irish weather. I mean, that's mostly rain, right? <laughs> you you tell me. Uh, I live in Ohio. Drippy stone walls, big um, tapestries flapping. <laughs> We're gonna do the. Um- the the monster taffy and hudson's lair those those are on my list to do as well Mm. yes all right guys and and the and the lighthouse oh yeah the lighthouse yes yes Uh, maybe it right it's gonna be amazing right at the end i'll do like a big explosion (laughs) (laughs) yeah make it way louder than the rest of the track massive explosion and then just spurting water (laughs) just spraying everywhere (laughs) Yeah, scare the crap out of him. I, I that's that's kind of- that scene. That scene. I didn't realize that she had got dressed and had jumped into the bath. I thought that she jumped into the bath and was naked and dripping and wet. Hudson came to rescue her, but then everybody came into the room. Jackson came into the room. And was like, "You all right? You all right?" And I'm like, "She's naked, guys. Leave her alone. She's <laughs> naked this entire time." And this scene went on for way too long, where everybody was checking. I was like, "Guys, she's naked. Leave her alone." And then it's like, and then Hudson dried my clothes, and I was like, "Oh." <laughs> oh this whole time that was, <laughs> no she was like that she, was a really awkward scene <laughs> she was like in a hoodie i think she was all like in crumbly she was dressed yeah she was dressed she was ready to leave and then she decided to pull on a green string and then went oh shit and then jumped into the <laughs> bath because she realized macy had walked in <laughs> but yeah i thought she was naked <laughs> Well, that makes the scene a lot more interesting. I'll make sure to it remember does, that. It does. It does. That's why I was like, oh, God. Like, guys, like, let her have some privacy. <laughs> she's, she's naked. No one's going, no one's giving her a towel. No one is putting a blanket over her. They're just carrying her like, Grace, it's okay. And I'm like, she's naked. <laughs> it's not okay. Yeah. Oh, God. All right. So we don't have a fan polar question um, this week because I'm sick, but hopefully next but just week. as well because we're an hour and a half yeah in. right <laughs> All right. guys thanks so much for listening and uh we will see you next week bye-bye bye-bye <laughs>